Before we get started, I just want to mention that the gameplay footage used in this video is from an old Let's Play I did with some friends when I was trying to do a crappy Let's Play channel that nobody watched. So, now that I'm doing a crappy review channel that nobody watches... Clock Tower is a horror game on the Super Famicom, released in 1995. Although it may sound strange to have a horror game on such an early console, it is widely considered one of the most influential horror games and helped to establish the whole horror game genre. Our story begins with our lead character, Jennifer Simpson, an orphan being adopted by the Barrows family, along with her friends from the orphanage, Laura, Anne, and L Lot? L Lottie? Lottie? She asks her new mother, known as Miss Mary, a number of questions about her new family and her new home, as the house appears over the horizon... Oh my god, run Jennifer, that house is majorly spooky, major red flags, run! Jennifer and her friends turned sisters arrive at their new home. Miss Mary says she'll fetch Mr. Barrow so they can finally meet dear old dad. Miss Mary takes forever. Ugh. Mom! So Jennifer decides to explore her new house a bit. She doesn't get very far when she hears a scream. Jennifer rushes back, only to see that everyone is missing, the lights are out, and that she's now alone in her spooky new house with a freaky clock tower just runs. This is clearly a bad omen. It's time to run away. From here, the gameplay opens up. It's primarily a point-and-click adventure, and though normally playing these with a controller can kind of suck, the game is built very well around it. You can run around to get around quicker, but running around all the time may tire you out and make certain actions much more difficult. You can tell how tired Jennifer is by the expression that she gets. I, I don't want to spoil the story too much, so I'm just going to tell you the first bit. If you proceed forward, you have a couple options of which way to go. Okay. You have a couple options here. I want to hear it. It's spooky. Okay. Yeah. Climb to the top of the pile to grab one of those rocks. Well, those are the good rocks. Don't do it. Oh. Just a courtyard. Wait. Uh oh. <laughs> I wanna go. Ah, God! She's drowning. I should. No. Where are you going? Oh, I, I have to save you. Go save Anne. Uh, Jennifer, help! No glove. <laughs> no more gloving. Oh. That was last. Ah! <laughs> what? Ah! Very minor spoiler. I mean, it's the first thing that happens in the game, but no matter which way you choose, one of your sisters will die at the hands of Miss Mary and Mr. Barrow's biological son, Bobby Barrows, also known as the Scissor Man. What is that? It's like a gnome? <laughs> uh, uh, no. <laughs> oh crap, Laura. La. La. Laura. <laughs> no. no! <laughs> Okay, go out the door, please. Please. Come on. You got this. Oh. Scissor man, scissor man, does whatever a scissor can. I'm just gonna call him Bobby Barrows, because I think that's much cooler and a little more intimidating. I mean, calling him Scissor Man is a bit like calling Michael Myers Knife Guy. Kinda loses its edge a bit. Uh. Yeah, baby! <laughs> well, Bobby Barrows is gonna be your main antagonist for the game. The Jason to your... girl that Jason tries to kill in the movie. At periodic moments, a lot of which are optional, Bobby will spring out and chase you down. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> with his slow walk that somehow keeps up to your full speed run that all these horror villains seem to have. When these moments happen, he will chase you relentlessly. <laughs> That's oh, what I uh, ah, come here! Ah, no, why did he get on that side? Get in the fucking door! Until you can use a trap to temporarily lose him or find a good hiding spot. So Is he, can he make it over the jump? Yeah, he can. Oh! No! If he gets too close, there will be a struggle. Mashing B gives you a chance of knocking him over, but if you tire yourself out from too much running, 
This will be much more difficult. One of the best parts about this game is the atmosphere, which is pretty impressive to say for the Super Nintendo and the Super Famicom. The eerie silence with only occasional noises really makes you feel like you're trapped in a spooky nightmare house. Your feet echoing through each room is often the only sound you hear as you make your way and explore deeper, discovering many mysterious secrets to this house, its past and the Barrows family. <laughs> I wrote your feet in the script, and that's just funny. This is funny to me. Another awesome thing to note about Clock Tower is that it has branching paths as well as multiple endings. Different playthroughs will unlock different secrets about the house and the people, and trust me, it's all super interesting. Oh, no, no, no! No, not the mirror! You never trust car mirrors! No, 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 no! Swoop that thing out. Oh. Oh. After playing this for the first time, I found myself crazy invested in the story, the characters, and the lore, and I was doing more research on it just because I wanted to learn more. I know there are sequels to this game, as well as a remake on the PS1 with additional content, but I haven't touched them for more than a few minutes, though they are something that I'd definitely like to take a look at someday. I give this game high recommendation, and I feel like nearly anyone would enjoy it, especially horror game fans and retro game fans. Unfortunately, there has never been an official release outside of Japan, but there are fantastic fan translations available for free online, plus you can pick up reproduction cartridges if you're that kind of person like me. I don't have one for this game yet though, I'm gonna, probably gonna get that soon. If you're ever looking for a scary fun time with friends on a horror movie slash game night, Clock Tower is one that I would highly suggest.